Let's start by showing the option of uh, fixture protection and updated stock for the upper level inside the 2D drilling operation. In this particular part, I've done a iMachining 3D operation to clear out all of these pockets around over here. And what I'm going to do is I still need to drill these holes over here. So if I were to open up the operation, and just for the purpose of this demonstration, let me show you what the geometry is. The geometry, I've chosen these holes over here. Now note we have, these are gonna be drilling down here. It's gonna be going into this area over here and it has this wall to deal with. And when it goes from this hole over to here, we have this clamp that's blocking the way of that hole. If I were to go into the operation itself, First thing you'll note that if I go into levels, we have the option of milling level, the upper levels by updated stock. So this is figured out automatically. Also, if I go into my technology, we have fixture collision protection. This will protect the actual fixture, which was defined on the part, such as the clamp in this particular case, so it does not uh, hit the fixture at all. And I've also told it, let's take the shortest distance between the holes. If I were to run the simulation on this now, and we'll do this using solid verify, what you'll see is the, follow is the following. We have our first hole. Now note when it goes to the next hole, it stayed down. It didn't go up. I told it to go the shortest distance. Okay. Again, going down, and note it started automatically from this level down here because there was milk machine all the way down to that level over there. It'll drill this hole. Now when it goes to the next hole, note it's going up higher than before so it can go over this area over here, taking the stock into consideration. Going back down, same thing down over here, now, when it gets to this area now, it'll go up above this area over here. And because the clamp is blocking that hole on the bottom, it'll actually skip that hole and go towards the end over here. What I'm demonstrating right now is the option of actual stock size for our stock now, if I were to open up our stock, the way we were always used to using it, and we still have this, is by going to relative to model, offset how, the amount that you want it to go off, off the stock itself. But by doing this, you still do not know what your actual stock size is. You still have to measure it apart and get your actual stock size. So we've added the option that instead of relative to model, you can also use an option called stock size. By stock size, when I click on the part, you get the actual stock size that's over here. The way it's offset, it's offset equally around the part. Well, actually, right now, it's the actual stock size, so it's not offset at all. Now, let's say I want to add material, or I know what kind of stock I have. For example, let's say in my Z level, I know I have stock that's 30 millimeters. And uh, in my Y, I have stock that I know is 130 millimeters inside of my stock room. And then I'm just going to cut it to say 170 millimeters. So I have my actual stock size now. Now, as far as offsetting it from the part, if I were to take a look Right now, if I go further down, it's offset equally in all the X, Y, and Z. However, if I want to set it, for example, on my Z level, I like to have it only one millimeter up from there. So I'll go to my Z plus, and I'll say, let's have it at one millimeter above the part. Now you see it's offset one millimeter of the part. The actual stack size is still there it automatically moved down. Now we'll demonstrate our new option of drag and drop
templates. If I would go to my task plane on the right hand side, we have here an option called Solid Cam Templates. What this would allow me to do is to actually take a template of a profile, pocket, face, and 2D eye machining, drag it to a specific face, and it will automatically create the operation on that face. For example, let's start with a face mill operation. If I were to take this face mill operation and just hold my left mouse and drag it to over here, to the part over here, it will automatically create an operation for that part as you see over here. If I do this, let's say, for a, um, say a pocket operation, I have one here for open pockets, and I want to do it on this face over here, I'll say, drag this template, I'm dragging it onto that face, and it's creating an operation for that face, and it's automatically calculated. Now, if I were to, for example, drag it a face mill operation, do it again, and this time drag it to this face over here, it'll automatically put it in a different MAC position. It created a new MAC position for that face. If the kinematics of this particular machine was for four and or five axes, it would also create it instead of a new MAC position, it will make, create it in the same MAC position, position uh, MAC but a new position. Now I'd like to show you the option in profile for vertical ramping. If I were to open up this operation over here, I'm doing right now a profile oper operation on this particular wall over here. Starting from here, going around over here. And I'd like my uh, entrance my ramping into the part to actually come from on top and arc into the tool pass. To do that, if I go into my link area, I can change my ramping to the new option called vertical arc. When working in vertical arc, our lead in will always be tangent. We have our radius value, and if I run my save and calculate, you can see that the tool pass itself is working with an arc coming from the top down into the tool pass itself.